So this video is about two of the other Mendelian exceptions that we'll talk about this chapter. The first one we've actually already talked about a little bit. It's referred to as multiple alleles. In this case, there are more than two options for an allele, but you still only inherit two. An example of something like this would be blood type. So if you think about blood type, there's multiple different options for the alleles. You can get either A, B, or O. The thing is, you still only inherit two. The reason this is important is that even though there's multiple options out there, you're still only getting two of those alleles, and truthfully, at the most two. You could end up being type AA or BB, something like that for your genotype, in which case you're really only getting one of the alleles. The important thing about this is that uh, even though there's many out there, you still only get two of them. That means this is controlled by one gene. The reason the one gene factor is important is that we can do a Punnett square for a problem like this. So we've obviously done some of these in class. We've done the blood type problems. They are a little bit more complex because there's always options out there that aren't used in the individual problem that you're doing. Or there's combinations that are possible, but they aren't necessarily possible in the problem that you're answering. These are some of the more complicated kinds of Punnett squares that we can complete, but they are still possible. So the key to this one is that even though there are multiple alleles, this phrase right here, this is the key. You still only inherit two of them. Now when we get to the next one, you'll see why I'm making such a big deal out of this. So we'll take a second to talk about polygenic traits. If we just break the word down, the word polygenic means many genes. So we'll put that one down here. The reason this is important is you cannot do a Punnett square for problems like this. An example of something like this would be human eye color. I know we talked about this a little bit early on in the chapter, but it's really not as simple as some people try to make it. Uh, they try to make it sound like there's just blue and brown as your two options. Uh, if you look here, as you make this one a little bit bigger, there's many different shades and options inside of those colors. Um, technically, they're mostly shades of blue and brown, but there are green spectrums. There's all kinds of other eye color combinations. But if you look at this, this kind of looks like the things that we were looking at when we were doing dihybrid crosses. You get a 16 box Punnett square. You've got now four alleles inside of each box. The problem is, when we were doing a dihybrid cross, we were talking about two different traits all the time. You know, for example, we'd look at mice and we would say, you know, th this mouse has white fur and a long tail. Well, in this particular problem, you're only really looking at one trait still. You're looking at two genes, which is why you have four different alleles coded here that are only controlling one trait. Uh, so with a problem like this, you know, I guess you could technically do a uh, Punnett square for this, but it becomes much more complicated than the things that we've been working on in class. Um, not to mention, we're not exactly sure that this is even how eye color is necessarily uh, controlled. There's still some debate over some of these things genetically, over how some of the more complicated traits, especially in people, are actually genetically passed on. But um, this is a, certainly a little bit more complex than we were seeing before. The thing to point out with polygenic traits, I'll add this to your notes here, is there's always a wide variety of phenotypes. So as you can see from that chart, there's many, many different options for eye color. Since these traits are controlled by many genes, there's a lot more different combinations that could potentially play out for you to determine your phenotype. And just because of that, you get this tremendous variety for things. So uh, other characteristics for something like this would be like human height, which, I mean, there are obviously environmental factors that impact that as well, things like nutrition and, uh, and other things like that. But most things in people 
aside from the, the traits that we talked about in that genetic survey, like Hitchhiker's Thumb and Widow's Peak and Dimples, things like that, that are controlled by a single gene, um, many of the traits in people, like hair color, eye color, stuff like that, are controlled by multiple genes. And that's why you see such a tremendous variety in these things. Um, unfortunately, there's no real easy way to do Punnett squares for these things because there's never exactly like a, a set number of options that you can get at the end. Um, because the, the traits are so varied. So this is something where you should be familiar with this concept. You know, you should know that polygenic means many genes. Uh, you should know that you get a variety of phenotypes from something like this. But it's not something where we'll actually do problems on it in class. Um, so as always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. When you're finished with this video, make sure you answer the questions at the end. Thank you.